Welcome back to another uh, video here on the Event Lighting channel. And once again, we're going to take a dive into the new software released from uh, MA Lighting for Grand MA3 called 2.0. Uh, we're going to dive into two specific features, two specific new features uh, introduced in this software. Uh, the first one is uh, the generator and the other one is the bitmap engine and uh, you can see some graphics running here in the background i'm going to show you how you can use an external source uh, via ndi and put that onto your fixtures and map your fixtures uh, using the uh, the bitmap engine but that's later in the video let's just start with the uh, generator the generator when i uh, read about it for the first time and saw it for the first time i was like mm, i'm not going to use that but after diving into it i am definitely going to use that because that takes away if in my case, some of the issues I have when using strobe channels on different fixtures. If you have worked with strobe channels on different fixtures, you know that they react uh, completely different. So random strobe on a Martin fixture is very different than random strobe on a Roby fixture or on any other uh, different uh, manufacturer fixture. Uh, so using the generator kind of takes that away from you because it can create random strobe, it can do randomization not only on the demo channel, also on other uh, parameters, uh, but we'll get into that in a second. The generator is really cool, and I'm just going to show you how it works. First of all, uh, you open a window, uh, like any other window, you can search for generator, and you can search for bitmap, uh, as we're going to get into that in a second. But first of all, you just open a generator window, and uh, you patch some fixtures. Uh, I'm just going to show you, I patched uh, a few different kind of fixtures here. I have a grid with actually something like 900 uh, RGB AW fixtures uh, which we're going to use for the bitmap engine and I have a uh, 24 vipers uh, in another world here and uh, they are simply just 24 vipers and I'm just going to use those guys to show you how the generator works. But first of all the generator is right here and you work with the generator like any other pool item you drag and uh, drag this uh, to the side use the swipes and go into edit. You can see right now it's uh, working with dimmer, but if you right click this one you get all kinds of different uh, attributes you can use. Uh, and if you go up here uh, you can actually use the filter here. If you have a selection in your programmer it will kind of clean out all the stuff that, uh, that the fixture can't do. So that's kind of cool. But let's just stay in dimmer here. You can see we have some speed and we have some speed variants. We have phases, all kinds of different stuff and uh, it's not like I'm an expert, I don't exactly know how everything works. What I have tried is simply just to play with it, uh, play with some of all these uh, different parameters here, and uh, you can see now I just did something, and if I clear this stuff here and I select all my uh, Vipers, I go back into my dark world here of uh, 3D and maybe even put it into a position, I can press this random generator and it's going to start doing things. Right now I applied a selection to my generator, so now I can go into my uh, edit again and uh, I can start playing around with all these different uh, parameters here. First of all, you can see the speed right now is 100. What I can do is go up to speed here and I can just right click it and I can type in something faster than 100. So the, uh, the fader just goes between 0 and 100, uh, even though I now uh, increase the speed to the double. Uh, play with all these different things here and it will do uh, something crazy. What I like here, uh, trying to create a random strobe for instance, is the ratio. I can turn this all the way down and it becomes much more, uh, seems like faster and seems like uh, more of a strobe thing. And uh, you can even adjust these uh, attack and decay thing here and uh, see how it works. You can see now we actually have something which kind of looks like a uh, random strobe. And the cool thing about this is you can use that on any fixture, which I'm going to show you in a second. So now if we are satisfied with the way the generator works now, we simply just clear everything here and we can uh, clear our selection and we can just apply it to any kind of selection and it just starts doing this stuff here. You can see it starts a little bit funny. Uh, I don't know how we can uh, change that. I'm sure you can play with some parameters in there, but uh, it kind of does the trick. And the cool thing about the generator is it's kind of a universal thing because if I go into my other world where I have, have my large uh, 
grid going on here, I can even apply the same uh, generator in here if I select the fixture, and it actually starts doing uh, this uh, random thing as well. So once you've sorted out how it starts and stops, uh, you can start playing with the generator. The cool thing about the generator is it works in your programming and your recipes just like you would expect it. So if we go into the playback window here, for instance, we are in this world with uh, all our uh, RGB fixtures. Let's just go into our Viber world here and we go up into our first queue. We turn on recipes. I like using recipes as you might know if you've watched this channel before. I take my selection here, which is all my Vipers, and the values, I go down into my generators, and if I created a generator, it pops up in here. I select it, and it immediately starts working based on my recipes, which I think is amazing, because then it's like a, a universal thing. You can use it anywhere. As long as you make your generator, you can point any fixture into your generator if you want to. Let's just delete this one here. And uh, let's go uh, back into the view we came from right here. And let's say we cover the generator now. Let's go into the bitmap fixture or the bitmap engine, if you will. Uh, and uh, for that, we choose all our RGBA fixtures here. And we put it into our 3D. And if we turn them on, you can see, or select them, you can see they're all here. And we can zoom in just a little bit to start working with it. So we clear this stuff. Uh, to work with the bitmaps, you start by creating a bit, bitmap, and bitmaps can be uh, uh, imported video, some content in here. If you see, there's no content selected right now, but you can right-click it. You can choose an image if you want to, which is kind of boring. But you can also go up into videos. And uh, you can see here we have bar, ring, and rotating, which is uh, videos that MA supplied for us. You can go into new here uh, and you can go into import and you can see these three uh, video files is part of, your, uh, part of your installation and you can choose them. You can of course create your own and put them into the uh, bitmap engine uh, the way you want. But let's just uh, clear this stuff here and uh, we clear this here and we select a video called bar here and uh, we basically just close this stuff down. And we take all our RGB fixtures here and we point them to this bitmap. And you can see immediately it starts working uh, the way we uh, think it would. So let's just uh, clear this stuff and maybe just try one of the other ones. Uh, we go into edit, we go into content, into videos, and we choose ring, for instance, here. And choose our fixtures and put ring on. And it works uh, just like intended. Uh, you can go into your bitmap again and you can attach a speedmaster to your video if you make a uh, video with a, with a high frame rate, for instance, you can slow it all the way down. So just put in speedmaster number one and you can see it moves faster. I have speedmaster one here on my console, so if I uh, take the speedmaster a little bit down, you can see I can make it work a lot slower or I can turn it up and make it work a lot faster. So that's uh, the built-in bitmap if you want to import video into your uh, show. But if we clear this stuff here, I'm going to show you how you can map something external. If you have a uh, video server of some sort and you are transmitting video to your LED screens, you can, in most servers, also transmit the same output signal into your NDI, uh, as an NDI stream and import that into your show here. And let me show you how. And by the way, if you haven't worked with NDI, I'm going to link a video up here so you can uh, check out how you can set up NDI on your GrandMA 3 console. But let's go into bitmap, we go into edit, and we go into content. Once again, we go into video, and you can see I already tried this out. I have some uh, NDI sources here, but if you uh, don't have any NDI sources and you are transmitting NDI on your network, you can go into new, and instead of file up here, you choose NDI and you simply select the source. In my case, I'm going to select my graphics card, and you can see it mimics exactly what's going on here behind us. So we close this down, and we choose all our, our RGBA W fixtures once again, and we simply just click our bitmap, and it starts working. You can manipulate your bitmap afterwards if you want to, uh, and that goes for all of them, of course. You can go in and you can rotate your, or you can move the, the axis on the X and Y axis. 
you can uh, zoom it in or out if you want to. Uh, you can play with the aspect, you can rotate it, you can play with the colors and all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's really, really, really cool. Um, importing these bitmaps into your uh, console will just make it easier for you if you have like a back wall of fixtures or you want to do something crazy with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, dimmer fixtures or, or whatever. The bitmap engine is quite cool. Uh, and the bitmap works exactly the same way if we go into playback here and we go into our queue. Uh, we can, I forgot to save my view here, show my recipes, take my selection, my RGBA fixtures. My values could be bitmaps and uh, that would be bitmap number three. And you can see it starts working immediately. So working with bitmaps and working with generators is really valuable and I'm definitely going to use uh, the generator more than I thought when I uh, saw the generator for the first time. So uh, I hope you liked this video uh, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, that's going to indicate to YouTube that uh, you liked it and it's going to spread it out to more people. And if you are not yet subscribed to the Event Lighting channel, be sure to do so. Uh, you can click uh, the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it and that way you get a notification every time I upload a new video here on the Event Lighting channel about the Granny May 3 software and workflow and all this stuff uh, we do on this channel. Uh, until I see you next time, I hope you will try this out at home and uh, when you do, I hope you have some happy Granny May 3 programming moments. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.